So as most of you guys know, the Antminer L7 has been on top of the profitability charts for quite some time at this point. Now, my L7 runs perfectly fine and it's actually heating my house, but there is an upgrade that you guys can do to maximize your profits, to keep your machine much cooler without having the loud ASIC noise. This way, you can eventually expand your farm. We're going to be trying out the Fruit Associates inline fan shroud that goes on the L7. It's an intake and an exhaust that actually will remove all of the ASIC fans that are on there that create the high pitch noise, as well as the PSU fans. It's going to satisfy that PSU to keep it much cooler and much quieter. So just before we dive into the install of this unit, let's hear a word for today's sponsor. Muskminers.com. They provide a wide range of cryptocurrency services such as hassle-free server hosting, consulting, and competitive crypto mining hardware from all of the top profitable miners on the market currently. Musk Miners has been operating in the mining business since early 2017. They have now been professionally selling ASIC miners for more than two years and are 100% US based. Please go check out muskminers.com for all of your crypto mining needs. Here it is, Fruit Associates Fan Shroud. Let me open this thing up, get everything out of the box, and we're gonna go over exactly what it comes with. All right, guys, check it out. The Fruit Associates Fan Shroud Silencer Kit. Now, this is the back side. You're looking at it. This is where the exhaust is going to come out into the 8-inch, wherever you're going to be pumping it into. You can see right here there is a slight difference between the fans on the back side or the actual machine on the back side and the PSU, but this little rubber or foam gasket will make that up, so that's pretty good quality right there in my opinion it's not going to leak and it'll just pump straight to where you want it now this is going to be the front side as you can see there is a three hole set up here for the three fans on the psus now we have adjustable fan shroud uh, assembly kits here this is going to be the one i'm going to use for the l7 this is a 30 millimeter unit then they have the s19 model which is the 60 millimeter we also have the 90 millimeter that's right here this one is for the k7 and the ka3 if i'm not mistaken and then they do have a 210 millimeter model that is for the e9 i don't have that one with me but either way i just wanted to show you that they have four different kits so you guys can purchase the one you need for your machine now looking at this unit which is pretty amazing it has a bunch of tabs and you can see that is the offset for the psu this thing is really really well made it's got feet so you don't scratch your asic anymore it's off the ground exactly like we sell in the misfit mining store those uh little stands there but they're nothing compared to this unit right here there is a hose clamp that is for the side where those tabs are obviously to tighten to your inline fan they give you an entire packet of instructions as well as some new screws for mounting these things right here and they give you some fan emulators there's four of them because you have to plug those in to your asic to make it think that the fans are installed because an inline fan can't directly you know communicate with the motherboard so that makes total sense also i was noticing on this uh, little packet they have here it says optional perform at your own risk now you can remove the cover to your psu and unplug those fans to make this unit actually quieter it's going to be these little fans right here that are on your asic so i'll do that in today's video let me go grab the l7 and we will uh yeah let's throw this thing on all right so here we are sorry for the noise as you can hear asics are quite noisy now i have this thing heating my house going to two four inch fan shrouds that i 3d print personally in the misfit mining store they're going up into my house and i have an eight inch inline fan way back there that goes directly into my HVAC system that is above this and when it gets too hot in this tent I have these pipes going right here going out the window when it is necessary for those of you that don't know you want to put this thing in sleep mode before you actually just hard unplug it all right made it back into the studio now we got to get this thing installed so there's instructions we're going to follow it step by step try to get this thing completely installed and do everything it says now if you could see again this is the front side this is where the inline fan is going to go and it's going to force the air through it and it's going to come out the back side and then eight inch exhaust to wherever you guys want these are the four inch ones that i print by the way they came out pretty amazing and i love these handle stands because it keeps it off of the table scratching the crap out of my table is not something that i enjoy and i'm very happy that these actually do have a footing as well which will lift this machine off the floor also and this right here is what it looks like without the handle stands or the shrouds on it i took them off so i can do a full time lapse following the instructions here on this paper so i'm gonna put you guys over here 
and we're going to follow the instructions step by step. Let's do it. What do you think? How sick does this look? Absolutely amazing. I love how it's completely tightly sealed. Like, look at that. Fits together perfect, like a glove. All right, so now we gotta get the eight inch fan mounted right here. Now this is the hose clamp again, goes on here. Then the eight inch fan. This is one of my uh, inline fans I've already had. This shroud came actually in the box broken, so whatever is what it is. This, as you could see, the only dilemma here for me, and it has nothing to do with this shroud. This is the type of fan that I purchased and the one that I have, so that's the one I'm using. Now I'm gonna have to prop up these two legs with something ever so slightly as you can see it's probably maybe an eighth of an inch quarter of an inch higher or so for it to uh mount into this with uh this end being off the table because this mount right here is actually slightly higher than the ac infinity inline fan so these are designed to mount with the ac infinity fans not this uh vivo home regardless i'm gonna get this thing all hooked up in the grow tent let's turn it on and see how quiet it is all right what do you think so all hooked up, I actually had to remove the other inline fan that I had up here so I could attach this guy through it and not have that other eight inch fan in the way. I haven't turned this on yet to see if it worked. So let's plug it in together and see, but I did plug in the fan and we turn it on high. You can already tell that it's actually not as loud as it was with the actual ASIC fans on here. So this is the fan on low. And then that's the fan on high just before it shuts off. So I mean, it's really not too bad. I'm going to keep this thing on high for now and we're going to plug this unit in. And I want to see it work. Okay. Let's make sure those lights go off. All right, no fault. That fan's on high. The only thing that I would be worried about is this fan dying, and I didn't know. Do you guys know? Leave it in the comments below if you do. If this has a high heat temperature sensor or not, like will it shut itself down or will it just burn itself out? Let me know if you guys know. But either way, I want this thing to fire up. I want to make sure it's working in the software, and then I'm going to see what the wattage draw on that is, and then we'll test the fan and see what the difference is losing what seven fans we actually unplugged off the ASIC and having this inline fan if it's actually a power saver as well. All right, so we just made it to the computer. I want to show you guys this ant miner real quick. It's been up for about an hour and a half at this point. Now, if we look right here, you can see 9300 is the average hash rate. And yes, this could go down over time, but typically it would get around 9200 on this unit average, right? 93 is pretty good. And when you think about it, Typically, people water cool or liquid cool units to be able to push the overclocks higher and to be able to get more hash rate out of their units. So I wonder if that will allow the unit to stay cooler and will get a higher hash rate as well. Now, the wattage also, looking at how much the fan actually pulls, was 160 watts on high. On low, it was 120. So I'm assuming medium is about 140 right it just makes sense and the unit itself was actually 3245 so let's do a little math just to see if it's more efficient or not now we have again 3245 let me blow the screen up so you guys can see plus the 160 if it was on high 
That's 3405. Overall, that is actually more efficient by like 15 watts. I mean, it's not much. I and mean, I still do have to try this thing out on low power mode, but I'll do that at a later date. I think as of right now, this is a win, to be honest. Huge shout out to Fruit Associates for sending this unit over to me to review. Now, this unit, you're looking at Amazon or wherever you're going to purchase it from, and you're like, why does this cost so much money? Now that I have this thing in hand, I understand why it costs this much. There are two massive parts that take hours, if not days, to print. I believe it would be over 24 hours to print one of those, if I'm not mistaken. And you need a big machine. That's a lot of time, money, and materials invested into this unit. Now, my Ender V Pro 2, if you go to MisfitMining.com, you can see I have little 4-inch shrouds and numerous like motherboard mounts, things along those lines, that take 5-6 hours to print alone. So I could just imagine how long that thing takes to print, not to mention the design time it probably took for them to get it right for all these machines. Now, my machines are actually too small to even print something that big. So I know for a fact they must have invested a pretty penny on these units. Now, inside that packet, those little fan simulators, those are, I think, $20 for two. $40 is right there, plus some screws and all the time and effort that goes into these things. I personally think it's worth it. Again, I'm not trying to shill anybody, but I really do understand the value of this unit now that it's going to make my ASIC run a lot quieter and cooler. So you guys can let me know again what you think down in the comments below. And until next time, I'll catch you soon. Peace.